Dark Cast Network, Indie Pods with a Dark Side. took a week off I needed it sorry and now I feel so uncomfortable recording like having a mic in front of my face just feels bizarre I was somehow hoping to turn that into a that's what she said joke but it just didn't feel organic so I'm not gonna force it because it needs to feel organic has to come naturally that's what she said anyway I'm getting way off path hello I'm back I know I said this last time but Even more so than last time, I'm checking subscriptions on Spotify, Apple, and I just can't believe that it just keeps growing exponentially. So if you're a new, no, you know what, fuck it. If you're a subscriber, period, new, old, thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. I check it and I see that there are people listening to me in the UK, Australia, all across the world, and I sincerely, not to get cheesy, cannot even express how much that means to me. So thank you for listening. I fucking love the shit out of you, even though I don't know you. Just know that I love you. And yeah, I'm going to jump into the episode now because it's been like a minute of my bullshit and you guys don't need that. It is June, which obviously means it is Pride Month. Happy fucking Pride. And the day that this episode releases will be Juneteenth. So I wanted to record an episode that encompassed where Juneteenth and Pride Month intersect. This is actually a case that I've been wanting to cover for a very, very long time. I heard about it before I started podcasting. I read about it on Reddit because there really is not any coverage for this case outside of Arkansas. And truthfully, if I wasn't in 15,000 different true crime subreddits, Prior to me podcasting, I probably would have never heard of this case, and that is not okay. Today, I'm going to be talking about the murder of Brayla Stone, who was a young 17 year old, beautiful, black, trans teenage girl. And I really wanted to cover this case because we hear about certain cases all over the news, and I think that's great. I'm not trying to diminish that. I think that media attention can be positive and negative. We saw that there were positive outcomes with the Gabby Petito case. When you have a giant spotlight on a case, it can often help. But the problem with that is there are cases that get thrown on the back burner. And these cases often involve people that do not fit the narrative that the mainstream media want to cover. Before I jump into the case, I want to get into what I consider to be an epidemic, and that is hate crimes, particularly murders against trans people within the United States. In 2020, Brayla Stone was one of 44 trans people who were murdered in the United States. And while you might hear the number 44 and say, this doesn't really seem large enough or significant, but it is. A recent study that I've linked in the show notes has shown that approximately 1.6% of the United States population identifies as trans or non-binary. So not just transgendered, but also non-binary as well. So the number for specifically trans, that percentage is even lower. And that number has grown exponentially over the past five years. So if you're looking at today compared to 2020, that number was much smaller. Drilling down further, if you look at transgender murders across 2020 and 2021, the majority of victims for both years were Black transgender women. In 2020, the Human Rights Campaign, Every Town for Gun Safety Support Fund, and Giffords Law Center, as well as Equality Florida, released a report on the fourth anniversary of the Pulse shooting tragedy titled Remembering and Honoring Pulse. Now, according to this report, 
there are over 10,300 hate crimes in the United States that involve a firearm on average each year. This number equates to over 28 a day. And if you look at that data even more closely and quickly, this is reported and there are so many more that are unreported. So this is just the reported cases. There were over 1,300 hate crimes reported in 2018 that were motivated due to a bias against the LGBTQ community. That equals one in five. One in five. In 2018, hate crimes against the LGBTQ community increased by 11% compared to 2017. With a 41% increase in reported crimes against somebody because of their gender identity. And hate crimes that are motivated by bias due to religion, race, disability, etc., those are still alarmingly high, particularly for the Black community, which accounts for about half of all reported hate crimes. I'm gonna say that again half. If you are Black, that means that a hate crime is way more likely to happen to you than anybody else. Now think about those individuals that are also in the LGBTQ community. An analysis of the Transgender Homicide Tracker illustrated that between 2017 and 2019, 79%, 79% of trans homicide victims were Black. And what's crazy about this is that only 16% of the trans population in the United States is estimated to be Black. This is a huge problem, and we aren't talking about why on the level that we should be. The only thing I'm trying to say by all of this is nobody deserves to be targeted because of who they are. Brayla Stone was born on June 3rd, 2003, and she grew up in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Every time I hear Little Rock, I think of Bill Clinton, and it drives me insane. But anyway, she grew up in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Brayla was outgoing, and she had a massive social media presence, particularly on Instagram. I went through her Facebook and read through some of her statuses, and she's just... You ever meet somebody or see somebody on social media that's just boisterous and outgoing and just has that, like, pizzazz? That was Brayla. Brayla often had awesome different colored hair from purple to red to teal, which is something that I always wish that I could do, but never really had the guts to do it. So I really appreciated that about her. She was just vibrant. Brayla enjoyed making music, and that was something that she did on her YouTube page. And unfortunately, a lot of that content got deleted but she was very, very into music and creating her own music. Brayla was a young, black, trans teenage female who was only 17 when her body was found on June 25th of 2020. And before I get into her murder, I just wanted to note quickly that her family did urge media to refer to Brayla as her dead name, which... If you listened to the episode from the Alex Van Dalsen case, this is essentially the name of a trans or non-binary person that they used previously. It could be their birth name. I'm not emphasizing this to insult Brayla's family because at the end of the day, they lost their child and that is something that no parent should ever, ever go through. But I do just want to say quickly that it can be very invalidating and detrimental to deliberately dead name somebody. So out of respect for Brayla's memory, I'm not going to mention her dead name at all. I'm only going to be referring to her as Brayla. On June 25th, 2020, Sherwood, Arkansas police officers responded to a vehicle on a walking path off of Gap Creek Drive. When officers arrived on scene, they found Brayla inside of the vehicle. This was three weeks after her 17th birthday. Brayla was found by an individual that was passing by inside of a black Saturn view that was parked on a gravel walking trail where Gap Creek Drive and Vista Point Court kind of intersect. Shortly before Brayla was found, she was reported missing to North Little Rock Police. And just a trigger warning, I'm going to talk about the scene very briefly. 
Brayla was shot in the head and her body was found upside down in the front passenger side of the van. Her head was lying facing down towards the floorboard and her legs were upwards resting on the backrest of the seat. The driver's side window was broken in and there was a strong scent of bleach coming from within the van. There was blood splatter all over the interior, but it was evident to police that there was a poor attempt, thankfully poor attempt, at a cleanup. And authorities were also able to notice discoloration marks from the bleach inside the car. According to an arrest affidavit, an 18-year-old man named Trevon Miller quickly became a person of interest for Sherwood police once several witnesses came forward. Trayvon's manager at the Arby's restaurant where he worked called the Sherwood police to report that Trayvon did not show up to work the day prior to Brayla's body being found. Trayvon called his manager saying, quote, I fucked up and I fucked up big time. I messed up and I won't be back for a very long time, if ever. So his manager obviously was like, what the fuck is going on? This is bizarre, but Trayvon would not answer her. Instead, he told her to watch the news. So as soon as she watched the news and she learned that a body had been found in Sherwood, she put two and two together and immediately called police. The one thing I'm grateful for in this case is the fact that Trevon seems to have no common sense or intelligence, which is great because this is what gets him caught. And I imagine having a conversation with him is probably on par with watching paint dry. But Thanks to his lack of common sense, another witness came forward who was a close friend of Brayla's, and she had said to police that the day before Brayla was found murdered, Brayla discovered that Trevon was having a relationship with a 19-year-old woman. So his brain may not work, but, you know, at least something else does. Good for you, dude. This was obviously upsetting to Brayla because she had a relationship with Trevon, and this was not something that he was forthcoming to her about. So that same evening that Brayla learned about her partner's infidelity, Trevon texted Brayla to meet up with him. Now, later that evening, when Brayla did go to meet Trevon, she was on the phone with her friend that spoke to police. While she was waiting outside, she was speaking to her friend, and then Brayla ended the phone call telling her friend, quote, here he comes. Approximately five hours later, which is also around 15 hours before Brayla was found murdered, Brayla's friend received a text message from Brayla that said, quote, I'm not up for this, end quote. Brayla's friend additionally told police that Brayla had told others about her relationship with Trevon, but Trevon was not okay with anybody knowing. In fact, he was paying Brayla to keep quiet about their relationship. That same friend additionally told police that where Brayla's body was found was not coincidental because that is where Trayvon often took women to have sex with him. Trevon's alleged girlfriend at the time also came forward and told police that Trevon told her that Brayla was going to expose him and his relationship with her. His girlfriend expressed that Trevon was deeply fearful of being considered a homosexual and that he planned to kill Brayla. According to his girlfriend, this was a threat that neither she nor her friends took seriously. Segwaying into something else really quickly, I'm not saying this to knock her or her friends because I'm sure that she was traumatized after learning that her boyfriend killed somebody. But if somebody tells you that they're going to kill somebody or themselves, please take it seriously. Worst case scenario, you're wrong and you look kind of silly. That's fine. Worst case scenario on the other end of that, you don't think anything's going to happen and then they kill somebody or themselves. Please take these threats seriously and act accordingly. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Circling back, one of Trevon's girlfriend's friends told investigators that she overheard a phone call between her friend, Trevon's girlfriend, and Trevon the day prior to Brayla's murder. 
She stated that Trevon also made a suicidal comment during the phone call, but he quickly retracted it and began to discuss his plans to murder Brayla. Additionally, Trevon's girlfriend's cousin told police that he overheard him on the phone with his cousin, who was the girlfriend. Sounds kind of confusing. And during that phone call that had already taken place after Brayla was murdered, Trevon stated that Brayla was dead. Now, how would he know this information? Trevon, who was 18 at the time, shortly before turning 19, was arrested, and this was a week after Brayla's murder. Initially, police were not clear as to what the motive was, but after all of the witnesses came forward and more evidence came out, eventually Trevon admitted, according to a 2021 prosecutorial report, that he was in fact in a relationship with Brayla and that he killed her in order to cover it up. According to Trevon, Brayla said that she was going to make their relationship public, and he was worried he would be perceived as gay because of his involvement with a transgendered girl. So now I'm going to talk about the asshole behind the crime, and that is Trevon Miller, who was born August 3rd, 2001 in Sherwood, Arkansas. I'm sorry, but he sucked from the get-go. I hate to say it, but just throw him in rice for eternity because dude is broken forever. That's it. Just fucking throw him. Just throw his entire body in rice and call it a day. Put a lid on it. Walk away. Leave it. On April 22nd, 2016, when Trevon was 14, he was charged with capital murder. I don't know about all of you, but I'm in my very early 30s. Never been charged with capital murder. It's kind of astonishing that by 18, this person's charged with capital murder, not once, but twice. And the first time they are 14. I wasn't even allowed to leave my house at 14. Pretty sure all I did was play like Neopets and shit when I was 14. I don't know. But this guy was charged with capital murder with two other teens for the murder of Brian Allen Thompson, who was only 17 which is strange because Brayla was also 17. Brian was also from Sherwood, Arkansas, like Trevon, and attended Sylvan Hills High School. Brian was lured to the parking lot of the Bill Harmon Recreation Center, where he was later found dead by a co-worker after being shot through the throat behind the wheel of his own vehicle. Police later determined that this was a botched robbery over weed. Over marijuana. Trevon gave an account of this, which I'm going to talk about why after, but according to his account of the crime, Brian arrived at the rec center and there were two other teens along with him, Xavier Porter and Quincy Parks. So Brian arrives at the rec center and Trevon is with Xavier and Quincy. Quincy gets into the car and Quincy had a pistol that Xavier had given him and he goes and he sits in the front while Trevon is carrying a broken BB gun in his pants. He then gets into the back seat. Now, there's conflicting reports on Xavier's movements. It's kind of unclear. One source says that he never got into the vehicle, but then there are other sources that say that Trevon's statement ends with Xavier exiting the vehicle. So that part is unclear, so I apologize for that. But... Trevon told police that Brian was measuring the marijuana, and again, this is one of those parts that's unclear, when Xavier suddenly got out of the car, but then there are other sources that say he was never in it, so. Once Xavier either gets out of the car or was never in the car, regardless of that, he proceeds to shoot Brian in the throat. I guess, thinking about it logistically if Quincy is in the front seat it would make sense if Xavier was not in the vehicle because it went through his throat not to get graphic but I guess logistically it makes sense if Xavier was outside of the vehicle and maybe did it through the driver's side I'm not sure guys I'm sorry I wish I knew but either way Xavier allegedly fired the shot while Brian was measuring the marijuana Xavier then grabbed the money from the vehicle, which was $15, and they all left. Police arrived on scene and found a pound of marijuana in Brian's vehicle, and the three teenagers were arrested later that day. 
This story along with Brayla's makes me so fucking angry because it's so senseless. It is so senseless. $15 in marijuana. And there was a pound of marijuana left in the car. I just, I just, I don't understand. In October of 2016, Trevon made a deal with prosecution to plead guilty to aggravated robbery in juvenile court, requiring him to testify against his two friends, but in exchange, the capital murder charge against him would be dropped. But thankfully, Trevon took this deal, and thankfully, he never had to testify as the co-defendants, Quincy Parks, who was 15 during the time of the murder, and Xavier Porter, who was 17 at the time of the murder, they pled guilty eight months later. Based on Trevon's police statement, this was also confirmed later by surveillance footage, but Xavier was identified as the killer. Now, I linked another news article in the show notes, and according to this article, this doesn't make sense to me, but even though Xavier was identified as the shooter, he accepted a 10-year sentence for aggravated robbery, while Quincy received a 20-year sentence for aggravated robbery and first-degree murder? Doesn't make sense to me, but it's a local newspaper and it's the only one I could find regarding sentencing for that case. So, in May 2019, Trevon was arrested again and charged with robbery as well as second-degree criminal impersonation for attempting to rob two people in a Walmart parking lot in Little Rock by posing as a security guard. Less than a year later, he was arrested on a weapons-related charge prior to being released. This is frustrating to me because there are, starting with a capital murder charge, there are a series of other crimes where he has gotten a slap on the wrist right before he murdered Brayla. And if he had just gone to jail and actually had to serve time. This all could have never fucking happened. So now six years after Trevon's involvement in the fatal robbery of Brian Thompson, he was back in jail on another capital murder charge for the murder of Brayla Stone. If Trevon was convicted on this capital murder charge, he could have faced the death penalty or life in prison without the possibility of parole. According to sentencing papers filed on August 12, 2021, Trevon pleaded guilty to first-degree murder. This is obviously a reduction from capital murder, which Trevon accepted, and in exchange for the guilty plea, he was sentenced to 50 years. 40 years of that was for first-degree murder, and then there was an enhanced firearm penalty that added 10 years to his term. Trevon will not be eligible for parole until he's served 35 years of his sentence, which includes the time he has already spent in custody. Trevon will be 53 years old. Now, you would hope that when somebody is serving a sentence in prison, it is done so in a way that one can reflect on their crimes. Now, I know that the prison system in America is fucking trash. I'm putting that aside. But this isn't the case for Trevon. He is not reflecting on his crimes and trying to improve as a human. And I say that because... On July 7th of 2021, Trevon was given a violation for aggravated assault of a corrections slash law enforcement officer. On November 29th of that year, he pled guilty and was sentenced to seven years to be served concurrently, so nothing extra. Same thing January 7th, 2022. Same offense. Pled guilty, was sentenced to 10 years concurrently. When I found this information on the Arkansas There's an Arkansas.gov website that I linked where you can look up basic crime information. It led me to want to look up his inmate information with the Arkansas Department of Corrections to see if I could find even more. And he hasn't been in jail for that long. And I'm going to list through the major guilty disciplinary violations. It's a lot. This is going to be long winded. Group disruption, battery, sexual activity, unexcused absence, insolence to a staff member. That one makes me laugh. I'm not going to lie. 
threats to inflict injury, failure to obey order, unnecessary noise or play, out-of-place assignment, unexcused absence, refusing a direct verbal order, failure to obey order, out-of-place assignment times two, lying to a staff member, insolence to a staff member, out-of-place assignment, failure to obey order times three, insolence to a staff member, unnecessary noise or play, failure to obey order, refusing a direct verbal order, out-of-place assignment, insolence again, interfering with count, that just seems stupid, threats to inflict injury, group disruption, battery, unnecessary noise or play, group disruption, threats to inflict injury, possession slash manufacture of contraband, threats to inflict injury, failure to obey order, insolence to a staff member, sexual activity times two, failure to obey order. Trevon is currently in a maximum security unit in Tucker, Arkansas, and his tentative date that he's eligible for parole is July 1st, 2055. I want to read a quote from the Center for Artistic Revolution that wrote in a Facebook post during Brayla's vigil, and it says, quote, Brayla was someone who always held space for others to be themselves and express their identities. Despite the fact that these institutions didn't support Brayla, it is important that we uplift her memory and dedicate ourselves to seeking justice for her. She was 17 years old, and her life was taken far too soon. We must put a stop to the violence against Black trans women. We don't want another Black trans woman's death to go unnoticed. At the time of Brelo's murder, Arkansas did not have any legislation against hate crimes. However, and I say that begrudgingly, however, in April of 2021, Arkansas passed SB 622, Senate Bill 622, a bill that at best is (laughs) a fake hate crime bill. It's not a hate crime bill. Essentially, all SB 622 does is delay the release of offenders that are already incarcerated until they've served at least 80% of their sentence if the offender purposely selects their victim. But this bill doesn't specify any protected characteristics, so that could mean anything. At all. It's intentionally vague. And this isn't a hate crime bill. This is really just an alternative to a hate crime bill. And Arkansas, to this day, remains one of the last states to have a hate crime bill. There are three. Three states that don't have a hate crime bill in the United States. Arkansas, South Carolina, and Wyoming. Circling back to the beginning of the episode when I talked about how hate crimes are still rising, especially within the LGBTQ community. Why don't we have a uniform stance as a country on this? We have three states left. It's astonishing to me that legislation wasn't passed that truly helped prevent things like this from happening in Arkansas after Brayla was murdered. It's disgusting to me that Wyoming doesn't have legislation after the murder of Matthew Shepard in Laramie. Years ago, I want to end the episode with a quote from Harvey Milk, and that's, hope will never be silent. Happy Pride Month. If you liked what you heard today, please like and subscribe. You can find me on wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube. Subscribe, leave me a review, five stars, tell me you love me. I will return the favor and like scream at you that I love you. You can find me on all social media at fthatpod, except for Instagram, which is at fthat underscore pod. And you can find the website that has merch, fthatpod.com.